I'm out of there. Hi, and welcome to the SEO podcast, Unknown Secrets of Internet Marketing. My name is Chris Burris, owner of eWebStyle. I am Charles Lewis, your internet marketing specialist. Welcome back to another fun-filled edition of our SEO podcast. Yes. You may notice something different about this podcast. You may see podcast. something different if you're watching. You may yes. hear something different as you're listening. We are at the Microsoft Store grand opening in the Woodlands the Mall. The Woodlands Mall. Whoop, whoop. In the Woodlands Mall. In case you don't know, the Woodlands is a community, yeah. a very well-organized community outside the city of Houston, a suburb of Houston, if you will. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the new store just launched. Actually, I was here. I got pictures with George Foreman mm -hmm. uh, two days ago. Yeah, those the, are all on Facebook. Check it room. out. Yeah, go check it out. And uh, wow, it's exciting to be here opening the store. Uh, There's a lot going on, man. So we to give a punch in the face to Microsoft before we even dive in. Yeah. Just for uh, letting us come out here and do this here. They got to come check it out. So <laughs> I know we haven't mentioned it. This is podcast number 242. 242. Yeah. As always, there is a tip from our previous podcast. And that tip is create a plan for your content marketing that includes research and execution. Yeah, research and execution. And again, we're talking content marketing. And so if you're content marketing, meaning you're developing content and, and producing content and publishing content, and that content is going out, then research it first. Figure out what you're gonna post, how you're gonna post it, what kind of graphics you're gonna use, what's the message you're trying to convey, and then execute it, right? Make sure you have the right people in the right place doing the right things <laughs> yep. to put that content out to make it the most effective it can be. Absolutely. Um, so remember that podcast tip is 241. Yes. This is podcast 242. Two. Mm -hmm. Please do not forget, we are your friendly local neighborhood top, top position snatchers. snatchers. Yes. Where our mantra is. Don't be a deuce. Don't be a deuce. Yeah, yeah that's a look. not a good not look. Not a good look at all. So as always, if you have some sort of device around you, yeah. maybe even a Microsoft device. device. <laughs> yeah, go ahead and tweet. Uh, what, what, could they, what should they tweet? tweet us right now? Hashtag SEO podcast. Uh, be sure to tag us in it at eWebStyle at Best SEO Podcast. This is number 242. You know, if you've listened to our podcast, we're going to ask you to do a couple of favors yeah. for us or one of a couple of favors. They're pretty simple. One of them has three, three steps. steps. Go on to iTunes, create an account, write, write a, a review. review. Not that hard. <laughs> if you write a review and you choose to, send us an email, podcast at e-webstyle.com. And uh, we usually read your reviews. You notice no tears? I noticed no tears. There's tier. no tear I tattoo no today. Tier. So um, next, if you go on to our Facebook page, yes. facebook.com slash e-webstyle. And right there on that page, you can find five stars. Mm -hmm. Click those five stars and add a review, please. Leave us a review, please. Next, we've got uh, Stitcher. We've been looking for Stitcher for a while. We still yeah, have we to, need find. to find it. Yeah. Yeah. So if you listen to us on Stitcher, first, do us a small favor. Right, first, write the review and then send us an email and tell us how to do how it. How did you do that review? <laughs> exactly. So that we can let those people who listen on our Stitcher, through Stitcher, using Stitcher, uh, how let them know how to write a review. Yeah, we don't, um, it's unfortunate. We should yeah. probably know how to do that. Yeah, yeah I, think, I think we should. Shame, shame on you. Yeah, my bad. And you can my shame bad on for not doing that. the review. <laughs> Um, and next, G plus local. Yes. You, if you're in SEO, you know the value of G plus local. So you make should sure, know. So do us a small favor. Go on to our G plus local page. The way you get there is actually, we've made yeah, it. It's how, extremely easy, simple. Easy, right? Extremely simple. E-webstyle.com slash G plus or slash Google plus or I'm slash all up. Google uh, plus <laughs> yeah. or slash G Plus, there it, we go. It is yeah. actually exciting <laughs> filming here. We got this big backdrop, the woodlands. Yeah, this is beautiful awesome. Beautiful backdrop of the woodlands um, here celebrating the, the Microsoft Store launch. Awesome. Uh, one thing that you can do for us, if you are an insanely good PHP programmer yeah. and WordPress developer, um, and you're looking to work with world-class experts, give us a call, 713-510-7846. Submit an audio resume. Yeah. Have you ever have you ever done that before? I have audio haven't. resume, um, and uh, and we'll get back to you. We do have a re couple more things. We do have a referral program. Yeah. You send us an SEO customer. They pay their bill. We pay you. You. You get paid. Just that simple. You can get a free website analysis. Go to our website e-website.com mm -hmm. and you will find a button for a free website analysis. We may actually be doing some free website analysis while we're here today yeah. while we're here, especially with this big screen. Yeah, this will be kind of cool to analyze somebody's website. Take, take advantage of that. And finally, our segment, the algorithm cataclysm. Yes. That special effect was really good with this yeah. huge screen back here. I know, right? Yeah, you definitely had to see it. All right. And you so, you so gotta, today, Algo Cat was 
was was crazy. So we're talking Bing, right? We're in the Microsoft store. So Bing has this new deal with Twitter. They call it hashtag explore tweets on Bing. And so pretty cool, right? Yeah, Especially yeah. for you guys. I mean, think about it. This may be a first. Who the first time? Is this the first time I've ever bought some Bing Algo Cat? It is. Yeah. Awesome. So check this out. If you go to Bing and you're looking on Twitter, you're trying to get the latest tweets or whatever, if you start your search with a hashtag, then Bing will automatically begin displaying the latest hashtags, what's most relevant, what's trending based on that search, whatever right. letters you begin typing. Same thing with users. If you type the at symbol yeah. and then type in a letter, then it'll begin showing you the latest users whose who name starts with that, um, most popular users, people who had the most followers. And so I think that's a great way, especially since Twitter search kind of sucks a little bit. Yeah. It's, it's a great wait, way wait, to do and, it and with Twitter. when you Twitter. say a little bit, what do you really mean? Yeah, it means when I go to Twitter, I, it's hard to find people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and Microsoft and Bing made that easier. So punch in the face to those guys for, for including the whole Twitter in their in their uh, in their search. It's, it's not a good look when you know somebody's on Twitter. You're trying to find them. And you're like, you know what? I give up. I'm going to email them. What's, yeah. what's your Twitter handle so I can actually connect Fucking, with you? Yeah. I have been unable to find you. And then it's always like Chuck one four nine nine dash yeah. zero zero double o seven octopus. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's re actually we have a question. Let me zoom in here so I can read this question. This is from Marcus Fox. It says, question for the podcast. That's how I That's, know it's a question. Uh -huh. <laughs> it says, hi guys, I'm in the process of building an e-commerce website for water pumps. The manufacturer has provided literally hundreds of different pump models split into tens of different ranges. Mm -hmm. I have two questions related to duplicate content, which when you're dealing with manufacturers, that's usually that's the issue. That's what gonna have. Number one, there isn't much more content I can add to the manufacturer's specifications, and they have this on their website already. Number two, and I'm, we'll in, infer we'll the question there. Yeah. And number two, within the range of pumps, there are enough technical differences to list them as individual products, but the overall descriptions are the same. How do you suggest I handle this issue? Uh, by the way, left you a G plus review, which we'll be reading here yeah. in, in a second. So, well, first I'll punch in the face to you with that Marcus, right? Yeah, that was Marcus. Uh, Marcus Fox, punch in the face. Thanks for your question. Um, and, and yeah, tough, tough question, right? Because you're dealing with e-commerce, you're dealing with products, and you're dealing with a manufacturer. And so in that, you're, you're going to immediately run into a duplicate content yep. issue yep. Uh, across if all If you don't levels, take care of it. If right? you don't take care of it. And that's a couple ways to do so it. So we got some good news and some bad news. The good news is you can actually take care of it, <laughs> yeah. right? It can, there are things you can do. The bad news is you got to rework all the content. You got to rework all now, now. And the reason that's the bad news, which is also kind of good, is because that's the that would be the best thing to do, yeah. right? If you want to rank faster and better than likely all of those other people who also sometimes sell those same in, exact pumps. Sometimes including the manufacturer. Including the manufacturer, rewrite that content. And you just mentioned there's thousands of pumps, so that's a lot of rewriting. Yeah. But that's going to be necessary. Now, well, in lieu of... Let me give an idea here, right? Because that okay. sounds daunting, thousands of pumps, reworking all the content. Choose the most popular pumps first. Work Start on with those. 10, 20, 30. Work with those, and you'll see the ben benefit of it. Yeah, and exactly. maybe you end up hiring somebody to come in and take care of that, or you know, you just take it at bite-sized chunks at a time. All right? Definitely. So that's the first thing you do. Now, if you didn't want to take on that task of rewriting all of that content, then you could do some other things, like maybe changing the the file name on the images, um, and then just giving proper links and proper credit to the manufacturer in that content. So maybe if you use that same description, instead you link over to that manufacturer. Yep. You mentioned that, you quote it, you give them the proper credit. And so that way, it's not really dupe content, it's more shared content, and you're giving credit to the right source. And some of the things that you can do to help you differentiate yourself is just by using the phrases purchase or for sale exactly. or whatever, because the manufacturer, unless they sell straight to consumers, which they probably don't, which they probably don't, is not going to have that type of. So when somebody goes and I want to purchase, uh, 007 pump, you know, sexy lady, then yeah. octopus, the word octopus, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, eight sexy ladies. <laughs> so, uh, so when they type that in and they include the word purchase, what happens is your website can actually yes. outrank the manufacturer in some cases because purchase is not, not included on the manufacturer's website. Yeah, yeah. Wow, we're getting really into depth. And in terms of the different ranges of pumps, 
you can definitely list them all on the same page. What you don't want to do is have images of tables that describe them. Yeah. Make sure that you're actually using text. Using that, real text. Yep. Using that, real text. That text can be indexed and they can also find you that way. So definitely. Marcus, great question. And let's get to your review. Um, been listening for a while. First off, punch in the face for the question. Thank you. Punch in the face for the review. Been listening for a while now from the other side of the pond. He's in Great, he's in great Britain. Uh, this podcast is a great <laughs> listen with, with an excellent... I mean, when you say Britain, I guess it just has this <laughs> great Britain. <laughs> uh, with an excellent mix of fun and serious content. A George Foreman style punch in the face for you guys. One thing you don't... Get, why don't you get some guests on? And that's, you know, we've we been talking about, about that. that. We've been, you know, yeah. that, that's coming soon. We will. We probably yeah, we will. will. And by the way, it's just really ironic that you said George Foreman punch in the face because literally I have a picture with George Foreman from two days ago. I don't know. I don't, just, yeah, I don't know how that Yeah, happens. like maybe he knew that Yeah. somehow. Yeah. If you knew that, then you should be a lot better at whatever you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Marcus, punch in the face. Thank yeah, you for that. Uh, Thank you for By the way, in. that review was on... G+. Plus. It was on G+. Plus. Was That's G+ right. Plus yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Thank yeah, hopefully you, so you plus one is why you was dead. Yeah. Um, yeah, we didn't talk about it. Uh, you missed, the I missed some section. All right. Yeah, no, no, we, yeah, I did miss a section. <laughs> you did the G+, plus. we just forgot to do what you do there. By the yeah. way, those G+, pluses, when you get there, add us to your circle, write a review. Yeah, yeah and give us a plus one. And uh, just so you, just so we don't miss it, let's get this out of the way yeah. right now. There are a multitude of ways that you can contact stalk us, us, stalk us, follow, follow us, harass yes. us. In fact, if you were stalking us and you live in the Houston area, you would have actually known that we, we were, were here, here today. Right you could now. be watching this Live. live. So the way you can do that, our Facebook page, facebook.com slash ewebstyle, twitter.com slash ewebstyle, youtube.com slash ewebstyle, and you can also email us, podcast at e-webstyle.com. All right. So I've got a little bit of news. Instagram.com slash ewebstyle. Oh, Instagram.com slash ewebstyle. Yeah. I've got to add that to I have it right there. Yeah, I just yeah, forget that's, it. That's what that yeah, is this for. It says right there, Instagram. <laughs> I'm going to get better at that. Um, so in the news, first and foremost, there is a new Microsoft store in the Willowbrook Mall, which is a suburb no, of Houston. Woodlands Mall. Woodlands Mall. There's another <laughs> mall that sucks. Because <laughs> it doesn't have a Microsoft store. <laughs> We're in the Woodlands Mall. Yeah. Um, Next, I just thought this was really cool. Rewalk, which is an exoskeleton to allow people who are paraplegic to actually walk, mm -hmm. is now approved for home use, and that's just really cool. Wow, so you're gonna have like the, those kind of, uh, when, I, when I hear that, I think of, did you see the movie Steel? Yeah, the yeah boxing exactly, guys? same thing. Same just thing? for your legs, in home use approved. Wow, so what do you see, this guy checking the mail, like whoa, whoa. <laughs> yeah, well, he's, maybe you don't see him, he's really fast. <laughs> <laughs> Next, uh, hacktivists. So that's a as a name for hackers who are activists. Mm -hmm. Have yeah, activists hacked okay, I can dig it. routers, routers, routers. Mm -hmm. You know the news source again. And I love the comment they said. Despite limited resources, Syrian Electric Army S E A has mm -hmm. hacked the the routers website again. Um, so you kind of only need a computer, right? Yeah, that's like, it. And in fact, you could get away with just one and take turns and work shifts and actually do a pretty good job hacking, I think. So, um, yeah. Hacktivist. We're going to see a lot more of that, I think, uh, I think as so. life goes on. And finally, in the news that I have, Chicago has lampposts that can track everything. Air quality, sound, heat, light intensity. And it's got the public in arms because it is actually also monitoring Bluetooth signals. Really? Yeah, not for like spying purpose, they say. And what they've done to try to alleviate some of these concerns is they've made available the code that collects data mm -hmm. so that people can actually review Re it and oh, know what it's collecting. It's excellent for activist invite. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> for hack here, come hack our Chicago light pole. Light pole, man. <laughs> really? Chicago? Yeah. Well, I guess that's kind of what's up, maybe. Yeah. I mean, does it, will it help with crime? <laughs> so, so their logic is that they can figure some things out, like uh, how many it, people like own help, a phone at the time, <laughs> right? So they might be able to identify this region of Chicago has a lot more because you know medical records are very you know the federal government mm -hmm. requires you know very detailed medical records, and if you can identify that this area of a city is showing some cancer or something, and you know the pollution in that area and temperatures high. and stuff okay, like that, okay, I can, can see how you can. I mean. It's Big Brother-ish. Big you know, Brother is Big, big brother Data, is definitely. 
uh, going to be worth mining into and yep. get more information. Um, yeah, and I doubt they're going to close down the, my, the, the, the lamppost. Uh, now, the, you know there is one guy who's going to go around and decide that it's going to be a good, guy, good idea to take these down. Yep. And they're going to go to federal prison <laughs> for yeah. trying it. Or some <laughs> teenager who feels like lampposts are great targets for slingshots. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're, you're, you're, you're suggesting they're not? <laughs> Just saying. You know. All right, that is the potatoes of our podcast. It is time to get into the meat of our podcast. Chuck, yeah, take so it definitely away. to get into the do meat. Do we have more punches in the face or anything? Oh, yeah, we do have a couple patiffs. patiffs. This patiff right here goes to um, at Inversion Point. Um, and on that, they, they tweeted out hashtag SEO podcast. They were looking at 232 at best SEO podcast at eWeb style. Another relevant, valuable, and entertaining episode. Boy, relevant. Valuable, valuable and entertaining, entertaining episode. I love yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Don't miss this. So, so put in the face to uh, inversion point. And um, I got the other Bing news. You know, Bing turned five years old this five. month. Five. Wow. Five years old this month. So wow. That's what's up. It feels like it's been there forever, doesn't it? Like it just kind of feels like. It kind it's of been feel there like they've been there a lot longer yeah. than, than, than than five years. But yeah. Five years, so so punch in the face to Bing. Good news. Good job. And, and speaking of Bing, right? So that's today's content. I, um, I, I was at Search Engine Journal. Wait, wait, Bing content? Bing content. Oh, Bing. Oh, we're at the Microsoft Store. So at the Woodlands Mall. <laughs> <laughs> not the Willowbrook. <laughs> yeah, we're at the Microsoft cool. Store. So why not bring you some content relevant to Bing? By, right? by the way, I just want to throw out there that I am using my Lenovo ThinkPad Microsoft yeah. Eight tablet, which which. Okay. Which comes and goes. It comes and goes, but that's that new surface. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, so, that new surface that Almir punched in the face to Almir yeah. for helping us out. Yeah. The new surface that he has. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And this is actually a pretty cool testament, too. We brought in some old camera, some old PV mixer. We connected it to a Surface Pro 2, yeah. not the 3, the 2. Everything just worked. I mean, we had to tweak a couple settings here and there. Yeah, but drivers it, automatically. I mean, it worked fine. And yeah. so, so punching the face, punch the face to, to, to Windows, Windows 8, and, and and working it. By the way, the one thing, one of the things that I, the one thing that I like most about Windows 8 is the handwriting recognition. It's just phenomenal. Anyway, check it out. Let's yeah. get let's get back uh, onto Bing. Definitely. So I was at Search Engine Journal today, and uh, well, actually the other day, and uh, Matt Southern. Matt Southern put out an article called uh, in the face, Matt. Bing's Dwayne Forrester, which by the way, he's like the director of a uh, of a uh, product development over at, at Bing. And so um, Bing's Dwayne Forrester debunks 10 SEO myths. And so, you know, we like numbers, we like stats. And so I was like, Bing? SEO myths by Dwayne Forster. So let's see what his yeah. SEO myths are, meaning that they're false. Right. 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 And, and see if we can debunk those as well. And so, um, number one, he says, um, I need to rank number one. <laughs> that's right. a myth. Right. Some people, well, he says that that's a myth. People always feel like they need to rank number one. He goes on to say that he also, um, not to obsess too much over being on the first page, as the click through rates, get this, and I kind of disagree with you, yeah, Dwayne, a little bit. Click through rates, for the top positions on the second page are oftentimes higher than click-through rates for lower positions on the first page. It's possible. I can see users who might work that well, way. Because it's at the top of the yeah, page. Yeah, so you're it, like, you get to three, and you're so used to it. After three, it's useless. You, you go to the second page. Reason, you go to the second page. And then you look at the top three on that page. I could see that. But at the end of the day, come on. Yeah, I think you do. Yeah, the, the goal. Let's put it this way: your goal is to get not, to the, not to be go, exactly. <laughs> like, come on, you may be right, right? Like, click the race may be higher for the top positions on the second page, but at the end of the day, who really goes to the second page? Yeah, yeah. I think what is the what is the running joke? Where's the best place to hide a dead body? Second page of Google, yeah. or second page of Bing, even a search engine, right? Second page of a search engine. So, um, yeah, yeah. First I page is to go. So that's a myth, right? Yeah. So number two, the number two, the second SEO myth debunked by Bing's Dwayne Forrester is uh, my title tag will save me. Dwayne says titles are important, but they won't save a sinking ship if you neglect everything else. Uh, uh, oh yeah. <laughs> and I, yeah. I totally agree. If Co-sign you think that. your title tag will save you, you are believing a myth. Yeah. <laughs> you definitely are. I'll say this: along with that title tag, it's really about the content. 
right? You need good content. And as long as you have good content and a good optimized content, right. then that title tag comes into play right. and that title tag can help lead you to a higher conversion. But no, your title tag will not save you. It'd be interesting to do a little experiment. Like, you know, we've got the blue one arm widget experiment. Right, so the website that says Blue One Arm Widget, which always places well for Blue One Arm Widget, uh -huh. except for when our podcast listeners decide do, to make do, content relevant to, to Blue, Blue One Arm Widget. <laughs> do another one where, what if we just do title, no content? What if we do a little bit of content and the no title? No title, oh, okay. And just, you're gonna play around with that. It'd be interesting, a uh, little experiment to do. Yeah, we should do that. Yeah. And then we'll report back after, yeah. let's say, 90 days and yeah. see what kind of happens there. So number three, number three was, uh, and we were talking about 10 myths from Bing's, uh, SEO miss from Bing's Dwayne Forrester. Uh, number three is social is all I need. And he's referring to social media. He goes on to say that social media is an integral part of a complex formula for SEO. Absolutely. And, and I totally agree with that. And I also agree with the myth. If you think that social is all you need, then you're believing a myth because you need more than that. Yeah. I will say effective use of social media can definitely help Absolutely. your SEO. It's more than just having your social so profile. I, I guess the right, the right way to say it is you need it, it's not all you need. <laughs> yeah, say that again. You, you need, need it, it, but it's not all you need. Exactly. And, and not only need it, but you need to use it. <laughs> you know, you know, you must be social. You must put out good content. You must share links. You must follow people. You must respond to people. And that type of social use can help with your yeah. SEO. Absolutely. Number four. 10 SEO myths uh, that, uh, from, from, from Dwayne Bing's Dwayne Forrester. Um, number four, videos are all I need. Yep, mm. that's a myth. That's yeah. kind of like social. Social, you need more than social. You need more than a great title tag. You also need more than videos. He goes on to say, Dwayne suggests that you're going to add a video to your site to include a transcript of it as well so uh, for the search engine's benefit. And I, mean, I totally agree with that. Anytime you can support a video or written content, whether it's a transcript, whether it's a summary about that video or whatever it is, then that's going to help the search engine. Now, I will say this, videos can definitely help in regards to your usability, in regards to your conversions, because videos tend to uh, give people more time on site. Um, there's a way to educate people. Um, and and what, what people don't realize about video, Chris, is that people will actually watch a 10-minute oh, yeah. video yeah. before they read three or four paragraphs yeah. that'll literally take one minute or less to read. Yep. But they'll sit and watch the whole video. Yep, absolutely. So videos can definitely help you in aspect of that, but are they all you need for SEO? No. And videos can be really good for helping conversions too. Definitely right? helping so conversions. So not just from an SEO perspective, but more from the SEVO perspective that we talk about. Right from that user. I mean, we think about Marcus with the, with the water pumps, yep. right? A video would be a great way to explain the difference between said water pump for whatever vehicle and whatever it should be used for. Number five, uh, buying ads helps my rankings. And again, we're talking about being forced there's 10 SEO myths. Bing Forrester's, Bing's Dwayne Forrester's 10 SEO myths. Um, number five was um, buying ads helps my rankings. Uh, and Dwayne says, absolutely not. <laughs> and, and I totally agree. There is no correlation whatsoever between paid ads and, and organic web ranking. None whatsoever. I will say this though, from a keyword research perspective, um, there is some correlation. Right, yep. you can do some paid ads and, and figure out which keywords work, which keywords are performing the best, which ones get the most traffic, which ones actually convert visitors into paying clients. And then once you get that data, you turn around and optimize your website for right. those phrases. Right. So in that kind of way, paid ads can kind of help with your ranking, but but in, for you specifically just buying ads, that will not make your organic right. ranking increase. And there was there's a myth that people are concerned about. If I start paying for ads,
Google or Bing will actually drop my rankings mm -hmm. to force me to continue to pay for ads. And that's not true at and all. And that is not true at all. That just actually doesn't make sense. Uh, one thing, another thing that you can say about it is when you talk about branding and advertising that's focused mm -hmm. on branding, like billboards or anything that might cause somebody to search for your particular domain name or your particular business, it can help your search placement because Google is and Bing are keeping track of how many people are searching yes. for your business. Mm -hmm. So that can definitely have an impact. And so just by having pay-per-click ads, either on Bing or on Google, you can actually, you can do branding. Your branding. Yeah, you can yeah. increase your branding. I mean, think about it. How many times have you searched and you saw a listing that was paid, you saw that same listing organically, and then maybe you also saw it locally as well. Yep. Those pay listings give you an opportunity to really say what you wanted to say, yep. to be in the position you wanted to be in, and really take advantage of the branding. By the way, this is really cool. One of the events they're having here is a, a Lego event for kids. Yeah. So they're busting out all these Legos. Um, I, I and just you kind of want to go help. Yeah. I wanna, yeah. <laughs> I give, know. Me the, give me the directions. I'm going to build a top position snatch. <laughs> <laughs> May look like us, uh, like just boom. Yeah. Top. <laughs> all right. So number six, um, make I make awesome contact. This is Bing's Dwayne Forrester's 10 SEO myths. Number six is I make awesome content. He goes on to say that you don't get to decide whether or not you make awesome content, your visitors do. Yeah. I love that. Because you can create, just like people in music. Because the way, the way to read that is I make I awesome make, content. Yeah. I make I don't care awesome. if no one reads my stuff. I make awesome content. Yeah, that's you know, a myth. That, that's a myth <laughs> because um, you probably do, but you really don't. Yeah, <laughs> because if the search doesn't like it, the search doesn't think it's awesome. Then visitors won't think it's awesome, yeah. and then your awesome content will not be awesome. Yeah. So, so with the, the key to it is making sure that your content um, is legible, make sure that it is findable, is searchable, yeah. and that the people who do find it actually think it's awesome, right. that they can enjoy, that they do learn something from it, that it is relevant, that it is valuable uh, to whatever they're doing. Um, and so I'll say this. Um, awesome content must also be presented right. Right. That's just kind of like, think about a movie. You write a script, you can have come up with this great story and you're putting a movie out, but you have um, a bad director and bad actors. Yeah. You have I've a seen, bad movie. I've seen that movie. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I walked out of that movie. <laughs> and so now your awesome content is not awesome no, anymore no. because you presented it the wrong way. Yeah. And so be sure that you publish and present your awesome content in an awesome way. Um, let's see here. So we're talking uh, Bing's, Dwayne Forrest, right. 10 SEO myths. Um, number seven, links are all I need. Yeah, that's, that's right. That's look, a myth. Yeah. Look, and I know we're talking Bing, but if links are all you need and that's what you're focusing on, prepare to get pooped on by the penguin. Yeah. <laughs> From Google. No smack. The, ping, the, the penguin smackdown. Pooped on by panda or penguin smackdown? Penguin will prepare to get smacked down well, by you the penguin. get pooped on both of them. Yeah, yeah I mean, really penguin really, poop. Yeah. Yeah. It just might be cold. It probably smells bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, it probably does. Yeah, I would think so. I mean, I haven't ran across any poop that didn't. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. yeah but don't want to do that. But he says, yeah, if, links, if you say links are all you need, he says, uh, you want links to surprise you. You should never know in advance that a link is coming. Um, I, I, I get the concept of that. Right. right. That means you're not planning, you're not actively link building, but people are linking to you because you have good content or good whatever it is you put out there, good video, good infographic, good ebook, whatever it is, and people are linking to it. I don't necessarily think there's nothing wrong with knowing the link's coming. Yeah, no, I mean, because if somebody, I posted a video, somebody said, oh man, I love your video, dude, I'm going to link to it, then yeah. I know that the link's coming. coming yeah. Right? But he, so that's uh, one way. The other is, I mean, to have your links grow organically is great, right? Yeah. To to put in, uh, make sure you're not doing any spam link building, and to put in something that that really is a is a concerted effort to reach out to people and encourage them to link to you. Therefore, you would know that they're linking to you. Exactly. There's nothing wrong with that. There's that's actually wrong with a good that's, strategy. That's effective. Uh, integral Inter internet marketing. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, now he did go on to say that. Um, well, I said that. Uh, uh, when we're talking links, I think it's, it's quality over quantity at the end of the day, yep. right? As long as you're building links that are that are relevant to what you offer, that they're not paid, that they're not some sort of mutually exchanged links or anything like that, um, then these links are probably good. And, and I think the key here, when we're talking about, you know, algorithm updates and things like that, um, and manual penalties and all of that kind of stuff, is your link profile. 
Right. Make sure your link profile is good, that you have links coming various sources, that they're not all using your targeted keyword in the anchor text. Maybe some is using the keyword. Right. Some is using click here. Others using websites. Some yeah. may be using your company name. As long as your link profile is diverse and all of your links are not from some spammy server somewhere, um, and, and then like he said, that you're kind of aware of them, then um, I think you're doing good. Yeah. Um, let's see here. Number nine. Oh, I'm sorry, number eight. Now we're talking Bing's, Dwayne Forrester's top 10 SEO myths. Right. Number eight, marking up my content will help it rank. And we're assuming he's talking about a schema markup. Schema markup, yeah. um, He says that's a myth and I kind of disagree. So it depends on what it is, right? So if it's related to events, absolutely it can help you. Yeah. Right? And if it's just related as, a, as, as an example, you can certainly argue that the description tag is a schema markup tag, right? Uh -huh. And that doesn't help your rank per se, just having the tag, it just, you wanna control it because that's what gets displayed. Often the schema markups are related to how things are displayed. Mm -hmm. Well, and they're related to how they're displayed in, in indexed. It. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, and exactly. Yeah, and so yeah. if you have a site. I'm trying, all right, I'm trying <laughs> to work with him. If you have a site in, 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 in two different sites, and they both had the same events and at the same location, but one site is just regular text and the other one is regular text that's marked up with schema, I refuse to believe that, that the, <laughs> the site that's not marked up will rank higher. Right. It will, because that's what schema is designed for. Yeah. The search engine can index and parse and understand what that information is better and faster. And also, yeah. you're giving them different ways to display it because now that you've marked it up, Google may want to display it in a carousel. Bing may want to display a certain image you have associated with it. And by marking it up using schema, you give the search engine that opportunity. Right. Uh, so I don't know about all that. Uh, uh, number nine, usability is different from SEO. He's talking about this being a myth. Oh. Um, and I would well, say- probably Usability is different than SEO. So a long time a ago, yeah, well, like well, now it's true. Okay. That was true. It used to be a myth, right? right I could right. see it being a myth at first because um, you were all, the, you, you didn't care about the user, you know, before, let's say five years ago, right, right. it was all about ranking. Yeah. But now the user experience is, is very extremely important. important in regards to how your site ranks. Yep. And so, so you need that usability in order to, to work with your SEO to get you to the right point. And so, and so we I call think, that SIBO. Yes, yeah, search, search engine, engine visitor, visitor optimization. optimization. Definitely. And last one, number 10, uh, SEO is all I need. Um, I disagree. <laughs> that yeah. is a myth, you yeah. know, and he said it's a myth. He says SEO makes up the foundation of a website, but there are many other parts that go into it. And, and I like to kind of think about uh, marketing in general. Right. Right. We, we put out a, a, a comprehensive internet marketing package that includes not only SEO, but it has the, the uh, pay-per-click involved, uh, social media marketing involved, newsletter management involved, and that's because um, it takes more than just SEO in order to really be successful on the internet. It takes all of that. Right. We're trying to do some selfies here at the Microsoft <laughs> yeah, store. Yeah, it take, takes all of that. I don't know if you got it or not. It takes all of that. It Photographer's takes fired, by the way. He's <laughs> distracting the talent. <laughs> it takes all of that stuff, not just SEO. SEO is the foundation. Your site should have good content, which is you know SEO related. Right. It should be marked up right, which is SEO related. It should have include some rich media, videos, images, audio files, downloads, PDFs, because these things help that user you know get more information on whatever they're searching for. Yeah. But all of that isn't the end all in all. It takes more than that. It takes being social. It takes, you know, some newsletter management to yep. communicate with people. It takes all, it takes some paid search if you yep. want to do some branding, like yep. we were talking about earlier. And so if you can do all of those things, then um, then you'll be pretty good. So so that was it. That was Dwayne Forrester's mm -hmm. uh, top 10. Uh, that's Dwayne Forrester from Bing. From Bing's Bing. Dwayne Forrester. There's another Dwayne Forrester. Is there another Dwayne Forrester, like a basketball player or somebody very similar to that, right? My uh, my sports enthusiasm is showing <laughs> right now. The amount of basketball I watch, I could have sworn there was like a Dwayne. There's Dwayne Wade, <laughs> and then there's probably another Forrester. So I'd list put them together, and yeah. they're, they're but phenomenal. But Bing's Dwayne Forrester's <laughs> top ten SEO myths. So um, great article, punch in the face to Matt Southern for uh, posting that, and uh, we'll tweet it out and put it out there. Cool. All right. Um, so time for what? Yeah, I think I did have some what news. All right. Cool. Here we go. 
What? Yeah, so this is actually a good one. So we're at, we at the Microsoft store. We're live yeah. in the Woodlands Mall. We, and and what, why is the store here? This store is here because to they educate put it here. people. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> to educate people about Microsoft right. products. And right? they're doing a great job of it. Because we Xbox just learned. Everywhere. I learned a lot about Bing Rewards. Yeah, just about Bing Rewards. Bing Rewards. Bing Rewards. That sounds kind of cool. Now, and all my listeners, all our listeners, our fans, like, like check this out. For real, for real, because yeah. we don't really just use Bing like this. Yeah. And so this has actually got us excited. But if you have a a, a, a a Microsoft account, whether it's with Xbox Live, whether it's with Hotmail or Live or whatever it is, if you're logged in and you begin to search, right. whether you're searching from a tablet, a mobile device, a Surface, a desktop, whatever you're searching for, if you're logged in, you build up points. No, no, no every time you search every time you okay wow every time you search you build up points you say okay well what's so good about points you can use those points to to buy things <laughs> <laughs> you know, so i like how that sounds exactly you can search to build up points to buy things and then you can buy things from xbox live from right. xbox music you can build up enough points and come into the microsoft store you can get gift cards uh it, wow. it, it's, it's awesome you can buy music you get movie tickets all kind of stuff from these bing rewards right and you get these rewards by simply searching bing wow with that said I did just download the Bing app <laughs> from, uh, from my phone, and I'm going to start there. I'm going to start there. I'm going to log in, and I'm going to start doing some searches and, and get my rewards up so I can come back and eventually, I wonder how much searching I got to do to get a Surface. <laughs> I, I don't know how much. I have a theory. Yeah, the theory, not enough. <laughs> the theory is you need to take all of your devices. You and put them all. You need to program robots to continually search on each and every one of those devices and simultaneously search. And in a couple of months. Yeah. <laughs> times three years, right? Hey, maybe we could enlist the Syrian hackers to like. <laughs> oh, the, the hacktivists? <laughs> yeah, log in as me. Yeah, yeah. And go search, bing, continually. Yeah, or maybe, stop. you know, we're in the Microsoft store. I see like 40 devices. Oh, yeah. You maybe can just, I just log in yeah. on all of these. And then when they search, yeah, yeah, it's me. There you go. That that'll work. Just, so they'll also have access to your fantasy football account or whatever you may have on your on your Hotmail. Yeah. Right? Or by Yahoo. Yeah, your, your oh, Yahoo. Oh, okay, yeah. Because I use, I guess I, I use my Hotmail one as that I set up so long ago. That's my interface, like on my. Uh, oh, your know, Windows devices and Windows devices and stuff. Definitely. Cool. Well, that was great. What news? Yeah. I mean, everything was Bring perfect. Bring rewards. So check that out. This this has been actually really exciting. Yeah. This backdrop it's, is it's phenomenal. Awesome. You guys should tune in. If you're listening right now, you should you should literally go to YouTube and search hashtag SEO Podcast two forty two just to get this video so you can see how awesome this background Javier, is. Javier, punch in the face of Javier for doing the graphics on this. He did an amazing job, like overnight. That was very cool, <laughs> as he usually does. And look, hey, Xbox controllers right here. We might have to fire that up as Man, soon as we get out. I'm this feeling is... awkward a little bit because I'm a station player. Oh, oh. <laughs> so, you know, there's Xbox everywhere. You can adapt. I think you can adapt. You can, I, you can adapt. That's normally my complaint, though. Every time I play somebody on the Xbox, that's my go-to excuse. Oh. <laughs> I So you can't buy one because then your excuse goes away. Exactly. That's awesome. All right, uh, anything else? That's it. You guys have been tuning into the most popular internet marketing podcast on iTunes. On iTunes. On the known universe. Because of you, 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 and you right there. All of you over there. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. This has been really exciting. The new Microsoft store that's open in the Woodlands. Uh, hopefully they'll have us back or maybe even have us at their next store opening. Yeah. This has been great. Until the next podcast, my name is Chris Burris. I'm Charles Lewis. Bye-bye for now. What? Oh, we done. We're just